For the latest information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic in Cupertino, please visit cupertino.org slash coronavirus. Good afternoon. My name is Corina Herrera Loera, Public Information Officer with the Emergency Operations Center here for Santa Clara County. Today we have another exciting uh, segment. Um, we have a guest who I will be introducing shortly. But before we go there, um, we're going to go over our updates for COVID-19 cases, vaccines, and other information here in our county. So uh, we can go to the next slide. Here um, I, we show that as of April 26th, um, these are the positive cases in our county. And so Latinos, as mentioned before, um, unfortunately, it still hasn't changed. We continue to be um, 50 or more percent of the total COVID-19 cases. And so we are only 25.8 um, of the Santa Clara County population, however, make up the majority of the cases for COVID-19. And so some things that we um, need to continue to remember that COVID-19 continues to be um, very present in our community, especially the uh, Hispanic Latino communities in our county. Next slide. And in regards to the vaccinations, uh, this week, as some of you might know, uh, we had um, our numbers shift a little as um, Kaiser uh, reported um, the numbers um, and unfortunately, the data at the time um, wasn't reflecting a lot of the Hispanic Latino numbers um, that were getting vaccinated at the time. Now, these are the most um, updated numbers. And so although our population, the Hispanic Latino population in Santa Clara County has gone up, if you can see up to 40 percent um, now, we still continue to be the population with the lowest vaccination rate in our county. And so. Although um, our numbers are going up, and that is a great thing, um, we still, compared to the other ethnicities um, and other um, groups in um, our county, we continue to be the lowest um, vaccinated uh, population. Next slide. And this, again, is a map. Um, I pulled this yesterday, and so it's the most updated map. Um, unfortunately, the numbers, again, continue to look the same. Um, if you see the darker blue uh, there, that means that in that area um, has the highest cases of COVID-19. And so here uh, you will see that the east side of San Jose, um, that area where the 680, 101 um, kind of overlaps uh, with um, with our east side, um, and you see the blue, and then towards the east, um, the numbers continue to be high. And then in South County, um, in Gilroy uh, in particular, the numbers continue to also be high. And so um, that hasn't changed. These are the most updated numbers as of yesterday, um, April um, 27th, that were on our um, dashboard yesterday. Next slide. And so um, as we talked about, you know, uh, our districts are reopening, our school districts are reopening here in our county. Um, and on this specific um, dashboard, um, you will see, if you go there, you will see your specific district and what the details are to your particular district. Um, and they are all listed there, um, all the districts within our county. Um, so if you are not sure and just or want to know um, the details to any particular district, you can go there and access that information um, through the Santa Clara County Office of Education um, website. Um, they have this dashboard up and available for us. Next slide. And then just a reminder that everyone, all individuals here in our county who are 16 and over, who live, work, or attend school in our county are eligible for a vaccine. And so you can make your appointment through the secfreevax.org, or you can call 211 um, to schedule an appointment. Um, and then also, we can go to the next slide. Uh, we have, oh, actually, I'll, um, I'll talk about it in the future slide. We have certain locations this week that you can go and attend in person um, if you don't have a 
an appointment. So I'll go over that in, in a few minutes. Um, and then in regards to vaccines um, and, uh, you know, our youth, as I mentioned, all um, youth ages 16 and over are eligible for a vaccine. And we are encouraging all of our uh, members of our community, right, 16 and over, um, to make their appointments um, and get their vaccine. But most importantly, our youth, you know, so that um, now that they're going back to school, some of them, now that there are activities such as graduations that are being allowed um, in person, um, and also uh, things like celebrations with family and maybe elders such as grandparents or somebody sometimes, um, sometimes, and I'm not sure if that's my internet or um, if we're on, um, let me double check before I continue. Um, so I am live. Looks like I'm live. I'm back. We're here. <laughs> um, okay. So back to this slide. And I apologize for the technical difficulties here. As you know, we're doing this live and doing our best to connect with our community. And so sometimes we get to deal with some of these things so we don't just record ahead of time and just hit play. So thank you for your patience. Um, so back to this slide. Um, our youth uh, who are fully vaccinated can go and attend event, events with less worry, like family events, promotional dance, or proms um, that some of them might have, sports events, graduation events, work, uh, spend time with friends. Um, and obviously the safest is when everyone is vaccinated. Um, so encouraging everybody to be vaccinated. Um, next slide. And so again, follow these core principles to stay safe, continue to stay outdoors, um, stay masked. Um, on this specific website, um, I did uh, capture a picture there. Um, the CDC has uh, this guideline as to um, when is best to be masked. Um, and so if you go there, um, it'll break down certain activities, outdoors and indoors. Um, you can go there for more information. Um, maintain at least six feet distance from others. Avoid crowds. Get vaccinated when it's your turn. Get tested. And especially if you're a frontline work worker or exposed to the public. And so you can make your appointment at the sccfreetest.org. Next slide. And so just a reminder again, the call center, um, 211 is our call center that you can call with uh, any questions within the county. Um, you can also call there for any questions or even support to get um, the vaccine. Now the um, 408-970-2999 number, um, you will have uh, people answering your phones and supporting you specifically uh, for the COVID-19 vaccine appointments and then also any questions related to COVID-19. And if some of you prefer texting, that's also an option. You can text the message COVID-19 to 211-211. Next slide. And here's a slide I was talking about earlier. Um, we do have some locations uh, with multiple drop-in days this week. So we have the fairgrounds, which will be open Tuesday through Sunday, 8.30 to 4.30. County Service Center, uh, open Tuesday through Friday, 7.30 to 4.30. Uh, Emmanuel Baptist Church, Tuesday through Friday, 8.45 through 4 p.m. Uh, Mexican Heritage Plaza, 10.30 a.m. through 4.30 p.m. And Wednesdays, 12 to 5. And then Gilroy High School, 8.30 to 3.30 p.m. Mountain View Community Center, Tuesday through Friday, 8.30 to 5.45 p.m. And then Overfelt High School, Thursday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then uh, Fridays and Saturdays, 10 to 5. And then on single day drop-in clinics, um, these are days that only uh, these sites have one single day out of the week. Um, Our Lady of Refuge, we left that on today. Obviously we know it's Wednesday, but we may uh, end our community forum today with still enough time to, for you to make it. You can drop in from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Wednesday, which is today, 
Um, and then also Mopita Sports Center. If some of you live nearby and are listening in and still need your vaccination, you can make it by 4 p.m. Um, drop in just today, Conexión Thursday. That will be tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then the Tafatolu uh, con Congressional Church on Thursday from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then uh, St. John Vianney on Friday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Next slide. Next slide. Thank you so much. So those are the updates in our county. And now um, I'm happy to give, um, if we can continue, I don't know if there was other slides on that presentation. And if there's not, that's fine. Um, get sad who's working the magic in the background um, will let us know. Um, otherwise, I can just share the, the information on one of our community members. Um, her name is Araceli Ortiz Medina, and she's been um, in our uh, community for many years. She is a mom who is involved with her children's education, um, involved with PTAs, involved with DLACs, involved with um, the schools and the districts that, that she's involved with. We're lucky to have her in our community. And with all that, she also finds time to tune in to our uh, community forums and Araceli Ortiz Medina was on our community forum last week. Um, if we can go to the next slide, uh, where she asked this question and she was on our Spanish community forum. And basically she asked, um, or she mentioned she wanted to get her vaccine, didn't know, um, hasn't been able to go in person. Um, and also asked the doctor for information um, about her health in particular and how the vaccine can affect her. If we can go to the next slide. And so the doctor answered her question, and I'm happy to report that that night she actually made her appointment to get her vaccine. So congratulations, Araceli. Uh, she made her appointment that night, and she had her vaccine last week on Tuesday. So it's now been over a week. Um, checked in with her. She's doing great. Um, and she did. She posted this on her Facebook, and I asked her for permission to share this uh, information with you all. Um, and how excited we are for Araceli. Um, she says, my first dose of my vaccine, I did it for me and for my family because I love them. And I want them to be able to be around the people who during this pandemic, I have not been able to see. I miss them a lot. It was not easy to make this decision, but in the end, I did it for the love I have for the pe my people. And she was feeling hopeful that day. So that was last Tuesday that she posted that. Um, and I just want to say again, congratulations, Araceli, um, and that she was able to make her appointment, get her vaccine, and also share that it wasn't an easy decision for her to make. Um, and when I asked her what that was about, if she wanted to share a little bit, she did mention that she had um, some health risks that she had to consider before getting this vaccine. But after talking to the doctor who uh, was on live, um, she was able to ask her questions and feel at ease and um, and know that she would be fine once she got her vaccine. Um, and so with that, I also want to let you all know that we do have Dr. Uh, Gerardo Solorio Cortes every other uh, community forum, which is once a month. Um, and our next one will, will be May 12th, where he will be present and will be able to answer any of your questions or concerns that you might have in relation to the vaccine. So thank you so much. Now, um, I want to introduce our amazing guest, um, Anya Artigas. Anya is currently the coordinator of mental wellness support services for the Alam Rock Union Elementary School District. She has a master's in educational counseling and a doctorate in education. I was fortunate enough to meet Anya over 15 years ago. Um, don't want to date us too much, but um, we did a uh, work um, when I was doing. Um, some work with the um, at-risk youth in our city of San Jose. Um, and so she was at the Lee Madsen community and uh, she was um, a, a part of the, the community uh, crime prevention safety um, committee that the city of San Jose had at the time. Um, so she was on there, she's an expert um, and she's here to talk a little bit about our youth um, and uh, our children um, and what they're going through. Uh, you know, it's a stressful time for us all. And so, um, and our children, unfortunately, you know, sometimes need extra support to get through these trying times. 
And so Anya, welcome. Um, and I have some questions for you, but um, if you can just share a little bit more about who you are, um, if I missed anything um, or anything you might want to add with our community, welcome. And Anya, you're muted in case you are talking. And we might have technical difficulties. Getzal, is Anya there? Can you hear me? <laughs> hmm. In the meantime, um, I'm going to read some of our questions and comments um, in case we're still on. Let me, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and read some of our questions and comments. Um, uh, I do see some comments about um, 5G and just reminding folks that today um, that is not our focus. So I will be focusing on the questions and comments around our our segment here today, um, are there plans for updating the social distancing business protocols? Some requirements seem now to be in excess of the recent modifications of restrictions um, from Gretchen Lindsay Hull. And so um, Gretchen, um, absolutely, as you know, um, things are changing day to day. And um, we know that some of our, uh, Counties in our state have actually moved to um, to the yellow tier. And so looking forward to moving in that direction. Um, I don't have specific answers specifically to the business protocols, but I will take note of that to bring in somebody um, in one of our next segments that can talk specifically to the business community um, and obviously COVID-19 in our county. Yay, Anya, welcome. Welcome back. I know this technical stuff is... I don't know if it was me or you all, but I'm glad you're here. So um, I went through the first question and we're gonna go ahead and um, bring it back to you. Uh, I did a welcoming introduction, but if you wanna share anything about you and um, anything you might wanna add about yourself um, for the community to know more about who you are. Are you there, Anya? Can you hear us? For some reason, the audio, maybe it's off. <laughs> okay. Um, Anya, can you hear us? I don't think she can hear us yet. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm hoping that she comes back in. Um, Uh, let's see. Can you hear me, Anya? You cannot hear anything. That's so interesting. Okay. Um, and we had, we had logged on earlier. Um, I can definitely, uh, ask the questions. That's so weird. Um, let me, I guess, um, I will start off with the first question. Um, Let's see. Okay, so as Anya hopefully is able to answer questions um, that are, that I sent her beforehand, um, I can go back to the questions that the community might have. Um, Getzal, if you can help me. Uh, Maybe just let her know that we're going to go down the questions that I sent her and if she wants to put in her answers um, to feel free to do so. This is unfortunate that um, our internet is not allowing her to connect by audio. Um, but if she can answer the questions, then I can read them out loud. Um, it's the same thing. Are you back, Anya? Uh, I can hear you now. I'm going to have to do it. Hey, she made her entrance. <laughs> <laughs> Way to make an entrance. Thanks for that. 
All right. Welcome back, Anya. Um, I was just letting uh, our audience know that we're having issues. So I'm glad you're back. Basically, let's just take it back on. Um, if there's anything you want to add about who you are, so our community knows who you are, I let them know your title, all the amazing degrees you have, and how you and I met doing um, safety work in our community many years ago. Yes, uh, doing safety work as well as, you know, I have to shout out the first time I really was able to work with you, Karina, was when you, um, you know, agreed to come out to uh, the school I was working at at that point in time, which was Fisher Middle School. You came out for one of our very, very first career days, um, mm -hmm. and you were a constant participant after that. Um, you know, and the amount of work you did with our kids during those times in particular, um, you know. You made a lot of impact. So we've known each other for, for quite a while and in, in a lot of different ways. And uh, thank you for having me on board. Um, you know, I've had the pleasure and the honor and the privilege of working with uh, Allen Rock School District and with our local community. I've been, you know, working in the community since 2001. And honestly, there's no other place I'd rather be. Um, you know, there's 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 nothing like an Allen Rock kid and there's really nothing like Allen Rock families. They're amazing. Um, Anyway, uh, in terms of, of myself, uh, you know, I am the coordinator of mental wellness support services. I have been working in this capacity for four and a half years now. Um, and, you know, it's it's been a pleasure to do this work as well and to really build out connections, you know, within our district, going into the schools, uh, as well as within our local community uh, and county partners as well as the county to, to bring in as much support as we can for our students and families, especially during challenging times like what we've been dealing with for the last 13, 14 months of living within this, you know, the times of the pandemic. Um, and so that's just a little bit about myself and kind of what I'm able to do at this in this space and, and you know, the time that I've been within. The Anya. Yes. Anya. Hopefully you can hear me. Let's take off your uh, video and see if maybe the audio is better um, okay. like that and that we can at least hear you. Sure. And maybe this internet will. Okay, great. Thank you. Is this any better? Yes, a lot better. Okay, all right. So Thank I'm not you. quite sure what, what was able to come through. Um, I heard it all. Okay, I heard it perfect. all. I just noticed right. it was it was slowing down. So I wanted to keep this momentum going. Sure. Um, and so with that, thank you for your patience and uh, and just doing the the audio. Um, how many students in in the district in Alamark have have returned? So per our last uh, our last gathering of numbers, we're we're looking at approximately eighteen hundred to two thousand students that have returned uh, for some level of in person learning. Uh, at our schools uh, since we've reopened, uh, but we've been, you know, we've been working with uh, our students virtually, you know, since we um, since we went into closing down the schools back in March. So, but approximately at this point in time, since reopening with some level of in person, uh, 1,800 to 2,000 students are uh, currently attending in person uh, daily. Thank you, mm -hmm. um, and. If you can just explain kind of what maybe a typical day for um, a kid in, or a week in, in distance learning and then I'm understanding partial at school, what that looks like. <laughs> Sure, sure. So what we've been utilizing, uh, you know, since the beginning has been really a hybrid model and we're continuing to do that with an increase, like we said, in uh, in person. And so what you would normally see is you would have, we have students attending school Monday through Thursday, uh, morning time, there's a uh, uh, multiple hours of synchronous learning that's being done is being conducted virtually by teachers um, and then they also have uh, asynchronous learning time during the day uh, and usually what will happen at that point in time is teachers make themselves available they hold office hours sometimes they will host small groups to you know help deepen the learning for our students who might be struggling a little bit more and may, maybe need the extra support uh, and then uh, you know what we've added uh, since our reopening has been uh, 90 90 more minutes at the end of the day or close to the end of the day where in-person learning is taking place and so of the 90 minutes you know it's usually comprised of a lot of academic uh, learning as well as support, but there's also components of enrichment as well as social emotional learning. Um, and so that is normally what it looks like Monday through Thursday. Friday, um, many of the schools are doing uh, uh, 
a lot of asynchronous learning um, so that teachers have, again, the capacity to continue to meet with students one-on-one -on -one and also uh, meet with parents if the need is presenting itself. And so we're looking at, you know, students being supported Monday through Friday. Thank you. And then we know that it's stressful times, as I mentioned earlier, for all of us. Um, but can you tell us in regards to the students at Alum Rock, uh, what kind of support services do they have when it comes to social, emotional wellness support? Sure. Uh, and so in terms of Alum Rock, just like we've done everything, you know, when when we uh, we're looking at learning. We did, we were looking at it from a very layered approach because we want to make sure that we are finding ways to support all students, you know, where it is they need to be supported. And so we took the same approach when we were looking at social emotional supports. Uh, you know, our layered approach started with uh, the incorporation of uh, social emotional learning um, throughout ARUSD during in-class sessions. And so some examples of that would be morning meetings that are conducted by teachers, uh, utilization of uh, social emotional learning curriculum, such as Kamochi's across the elementary schools, uh, use of second step across some of our middle schools. So in terms of the social emotional learning components, that's what's available. Now, in terms of other social emotional supports, you know, we've been really blessed to have some strong partnerships with the county, uh, with the city and with some, you know, nonprofits that have really stepped up in this last, uh, in this last 13 months. Um, and, you know, they've been providing services um, and those services uh, are, are services that are provided when families are working with our quadrant coordinators who can get them connected. Uh, they have a really amazing working knowledge of available resources, how to navigate county supports, and also how to connect our students and families with those organizations. Uh, and, you know, I would be remiss in talking about social emotional supports if I didn't give a quick shout out to our school counselors across the middle schools. You know, our school counselors have been working diligently, uh, providing telecounseling, also, you know, creating counseling classrooms that kids can drop in uh, for and uh, connect with them. And we also have our um, counselor intern expansion program uh, that ranges across all of our schools um, where school counselor interns under my supervision are actually able to provide a level of counseling support for students at the elementary school, uh, for elementary schools that do not have a school counselor present. Um, and so in terms of social emotional supports, um, it is layered with some instruction, some curriculum, and a lot of individualized and small group through the counselors, counselor interns, as well as the organizations we work with. Thank you. Um, and this, you know, I'm listening to you fine, and I'm hoping that this stays on. I'm wondering if we can have you back on camera and maybe <laughs> it'll work. Let's try it. Sure. And let's, not, let's try. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> so far, so good. Okay. Um, and so and um, in regards to our children and children, you know, how they express themselves, um, it's a little bit, you know, sometimes in our face, sometimes not. Um, but can you tell us some of the red flags for parents and guardians to look out for in our children that may indicate that they're in need of maybe mental health services? Um, and if they witness some of these flags, um, what should a parent do? And is it different for younger children compared to youth um, age, you know, a little um, older adolescent children? Sure. So I think, you know, I think that there are some uh, red flags that are going to be typical across the board, regardless of age. Um, you know, what I would suggest for parents to pay attention to for kids would be uh, changes in patterns, right? So changes in sleeping patterns, changes in eating patterns, um, you know, changes in terms of things that they may have been interested in that they may have liked to do. And you see them like losing an interest in it or not really connecting with it. Um, you know, you might see levels of restlessness, uh, struggles with focusing. Uh, you may also see increased anxiety. Um, and the other thing would be low frustration levels as well. And so sometimes the low frustration levels how that might manifest itself would be, you know, your student getting frustrated with um, something that they may be learning that they're struggling with much quicker than they would have in the past, um, or getting frustrated with a new toy or a video game. Um, and you'll what you'll see is you'll see like an increased reaction. Um, so any of those things, you know, in and of themselves would be a red flag. The other thing to look for, because the other, you know, something to keep in mind is that children will present differently. 
right? Uh, it's not just about the age, it's also about who the child is. You know, some kids will be externalizers. And so the behaviors that I just talked about, some of them, the low frustration, the the focus, the the anger piece that may be presenting, those normally are something that would be- uh, You know what, Anya? Yeah. <laughs> Let's put you back on, sorry. And I don't know if it's just me, but I can hear a little choppy. So I rather, you were doing great without, or but we can hear you better without the- Without I guess um, that's okay. And it might I, be me. <laughs> so okay. you go on and Quetzal might take over just so you know okay. if it's me. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry for interrupting. It's okay. So should I turn my camera off or leave it on? What's the preference here? Go okay. ahead and continue with your answer. I'm sorry <laughs> for interrupting. That's, that's, no, you're totally fine. Totally fine. <laughs> Technology has been nothing if not helpful, but challenging through through this time. So I totally understand it. Um, and so again, like I said, some red flags to look out for, you know, are going to be really behavior connected, uh, changes in sleeping and eating, changes in just you know the regular behaviors you'd see for your from your student um and again just keeping in mind that kids are going to be impacted differently and they're going to present differently so, so where some kids may show their frustration level you know and an increase in it in the way that they react other kids might become very internalized and you might start to see some issues with isolation so if you're seeing any of those things you know um some of the things that i would suggest you know first piece is just is just sitting down with your kiddo with your student and just having a conversation with them you know there's there's some power in in you know stopping our day sitting down and just checking in you know and and the questions you know they can be the most simple you know basic questions like how was your day you know tell me what was good about your day especially for little ones right um you know tell me what was good about your day what you like about your day what made you happy today what made you sad today right um what could have been better okay um the other thing is you know if if you're noticing a pattern in terms of the behavior for your student you know having a conversation around that and maybe the conversation looks like you know i've noticed that you haven't really been yourself lately i've noticed that there's been some changes for you you want to talk about it you know i i can listen and maybe even i maybe i can even help right so just you know i i'm a firm believer in just you know taking a really honest approach with kids and, and sitting down and just having a conversation with them um, because a lot of times kids, when given the opportunity, can tell you some of what's really happening for them. Obviously, if they're younger, that's a little bit more difficult. Um, you know, but the good the good thing is that there are a lot of people, you know, within the school district as well as within the county that are ready and positioned to to help and support our families because we know, we acknowledge uh, and understand how difficult the last 13 months have been. Um, you know, for our kids, for our families, you know, and for our community at large. Um, so, you know, just some suggested tips. But again, you know, if you need support, if you're concerned about your child, reach out to your school. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people that are, you know, uh, ready and willing to connect with parents to help you find the support that you might need for your student. Great, and I uh, went off, so I think it might be my video and my connection over here. So we're gonna try it this way. If not, Quetzal is gonna jump in as the amazing uh, public information officer working behind the scenes here. Okay. So um, I'm not sure if she asked any of the future questions because she has those two prepared, of course. Um, but I'm gonna ask this one, and if you already answered, let me know. How can parents support um, other parents that might be struggling with a child with mental health um, illnesses. Yep. Um, my recommendation would be like in terms of in terms of parents supporting other parents. Here's the first thing I'm going to really put out there, Karina. Um, it's important for us to to support you know the other parents around us. It's important for us to support our neighbors, you know, and be be very community minded. But it also has to start with us. We need to make sure that before we're providing support for other people, that we're also providing support for ourselves and that we're also, you know, taking the time to show ourselves compassion and caring um, because just as much as other people are struggling around us, there's also internalized struggle for us. So starting point for me is always making sure that you're also practicing some level of self-care. Um, you know, the other thing would be, you know, how to support 
how can parents support other parents? You know, sometimes it's as simple as having the other parent understand that they're not alone. Like that the struggle that they're facing right now, you know, is, is something that, that is, uh, that can be related to because, you know, they may have had the same struggle or something similar. Holding space for conversations, you know, and listening with compassion and also, you know, assisting, assisting, uh, your fellow parents or your fellow community members in connecting with resources and supports that are available for them. Starting point for a lot of a lot of parents can really be our school campuses. You know, whether or not there's a school counselor on campus, administrators, you know, have really great um, listening ears. And our administrators, particularly in Alam Rock, they're amazing. Um, incredibly supportive and they really care deeply about the kids in the community. So starting point would be talking to somebody at the school, either a community liaison or the administrator, or if there's a school counselor, the school counselor, and asking them to help you help that parent to navigate and get the support that they may need, whether it's for their child, you know, for the family at large, or maybe some resources they need to come into the home um, around food or what have you. Um, the people at the schools are well positioned to really provide support. Um, so best way for parents to support other parents is to help them to sometimes have the conversation to ask for what they need, because sometimes that's the very first step and sometimes that's the most difficult step to take. Thank you. Uh, very important information. You kind of touched on my next question a little bit, um, but if you can reiterate. And before I ask it, I just want to remind our audience that if you have any questions for Anya um, or myself uh, or Quetzal at this point, if something happens to me as a public information officer with the county, um, please put them in the chat and we will do our best to respond to them. Um, so with that, what if I'm a parent and I'm listening in and some of the things you mentioned resonate with me, um, you know, maybe my child might be experiencing some of that and we still haven't gotten um, any support or maybe as a parent, I haven't reached out. Who All right, I think we're continuing to have some technical difficulties on Gorina's side. Um, so I will just continue the conversation from here. Um, what Gorina was bringing up was you know, we talked about how to support parents, how to um, get the resources that we need. Um, and as you talked about being from Alam Rock School District, um, for those who are viewing today and are not part of Alam Rock um, School District, what are what is the title or who is that support person for families um, to look for within their districts? Sure. And so I'm going to, again, I, I'm referencing, you know, what I understand to exist at a majority of the districts. So a majority of the districts, um, you know, across Santa Clara County, there is either going to be um, somebody that's doing some sort of parent resource work. So for us here in Alam Roth, that, you know, that title is a community liaison. Um, you know, that could be a starting point if we're looking at school site connecting, right? So community liaison or parent resource, um, because like I said, they have different titles across different districts. Um, or you could also reach out to the school counselor. Some districts, some districts have school social workers in place of school counselors, so they could also reach out to the school social worker. Administrators are also another starting point. If we're looking at having parents reach out and they, their comfort level is reaching out to people that they know or interact with, you know, school site would be the beginning point. Um, if they're wanting to go to the district level and ask for support, I would say the starting point should always be uh, the department that's serving student needs. And that's the majority of our departments, but student services normally across the board, across districts is the one that is uh, uh, more focused on bringing like direct supports around counseling and such. Um, and so I would, you know, suggest that reaching out to the student services department in your school district could be another starting point. Um, for those, you know, folks that, you know, are uh, uh, open to uh, navigating technology or exploring technology a little bit or, or you know, uh, doing some outreach via phone. I know that in the past, the county has had a 211 number that uh, parents can resource and, you know, you call them and you talk to them about what the needs are that are presenting and they can give you, 
you know, some uh, folks that you can connect with that could, you know, possibly uh, begin the process of supporting or finding supports for you. Um, and so that would, those would be just some of my suggestions. Um, you know, the county, like I said, is really rich in terms of the supports that are available. Um, and so I would just uh, start at the schools if that's your comfort level. If not, I would go to the district. If not, you know, the county, like I said, it's uh, they've made it easier and easier over the years to navigate the services that are out there for families and for children. And I'm back. <laughs> Welcome back. In the Went state. on our journey and I'm back. Man, <laughs> I tell you, like, it, it makes me think of our poor children, right, who are logged in, um, who've been distance learning for such long time. And whether it's, you know, the teacher being logged off because of the connection, because I forgot my husband is also working remotely, you know, and we're both using the internet and then our children. And then it's like, it, that alone can create, create the mental health, right? Like mm -hmm. instability, like, oh my God. So um, just one of those opportunities to realize, you know, as a parent, right, as an adult, I can get up and say, you know what, after this, I'm gonna take a walk. I need some air, I'll be back. But my 12 year old daughter can't be like, I'll be back. I got to go, you know, I'd be like, wait, 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 come back. And so um, just, you know, also, I think creator made it all happen. So, um, you know, as parents, you could see like, this is frustrating, right? And and how do we respond also as parents to the need of our children that sometimes even as adults, we can't like comprehend some things. Mm -hmm. um, and then not to mention, you know, if, if, if one of our family members are dealing with or ourselves, COVID-19 or, you know, all these other stressors um that are out there you know losing jobs um you know that then you know can go to losing your home where do i get food from how am i going to feed my family and um you know our children vibing off of that right like that that uh, emotional state and so i'm back <laughs> um, welcome back into the space thank you and um thank you for sharing all that those resources anya and um, we know that you are obviously focused to alum rock um and we're blessed to have you at alum rock um but we're also um glad that you're sharing you know that there's somebody in every district right that that's there to support our children through um through whatever the need is um so I, I don't know if the community heard me, but I was encouraging them to ask questions. So far, there's no questions that I see, um, which means that you're just doing a great job of providing that information. So thank you so much. Um, and um, in regards to the last question here, um, you know, that I had was, are you familiar with any specific funding um, coming in? Um, to support youth in this new phase or reopening of our schools? And I'm not sure. Okay. Did you hear my question? Sorry about that. No, I think it was okay. my turn to have problems with technology. So <laughs> no worries. <laughs> and we'll be done shortly here. Do you um, know, or are you familiar with any funding um, that has more recently come in to help support um, our schools, you know, our youth in this new phase for reopening schools, but specifically focused on mental health support. Mm -hmm. So I know, you know, I know that there is, um, I know that the state of California has really been looking at uh, the mental health of our students and how it's been impacted and affected. And so I know that, you know, there there is gonna be some funding coming towards uh, beginning to address, you know, some of the supports that might be needed. I'm going to tell you, Karina, that I, I'm i hesitant to speak more on it because I want to understand it more before I bring it out into the space and, and have a conversation about it. Um, so I know that there is some level of funding that's going to come through, um, you know, as a support because of what uh, people are like, currently having to deal with uh, around COVID, but I don't have the details of it. So I'm hesitant to speak on it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, well, thank you so much in, in answering all the questions that we had for you. Um, and I'm going to encourage our audience, if there's any questions there that you might have for Anya um, or myself as a public information officer, that we can um, assist in answering. 
Um, otherwise, again, you know, you did a great job in answering the questions and providing the information that our audience are probably like, we're good, we're good to go. Um, and, uh, you know, I also know that, um, unfortunately, you know, um, based on one of the many other hats that I wear, right? I'm a, I'm a reassigned disaster worker um, here in our county, but I'm also a probation officer within our, co our county. And so maybe Anya, before we go, if you could talk a little bit about what happens when some of these um, needs aren't fulfilled in a healthy way, right? With mm -hmm. the social emotional mm -hmm. support that our children might need. Sure. Um, I think, you know, I think something that we need to look at is that um, when we aren't when we aren't coming into the space, when I say we, I'm saying we collectively as a society, as a community that serves and supports children, um, when we uh, don't have opportunities to provide supports for children, for them to process, you know, what they may have experienced, and for them to begin to find ways to heal from what they've experienced. Uh, one of the things that unfortunately presents as an option for kids is the utilization or the using of like maladaptive behaviors, right? So when we're talking maladaptive behaviors, we're talking about, you know, sometimes kids may, um, the maladaptive behaviors might present itself in, in them trying to find ways to escape. Um, sometimes the escape, you know, is is uh, would with cigarettes, with vaping, with, with drugs or alcohol. Uh, sometimes it leads to them engaging in activities that are not, that are illegal, that could, you know, uh, result in them getting in trouble. Um, you know, unfortunately, when we um, are not able to provide the supports within the space, you know, that are needed, sometimes kids will find their own way to deal with what they're feeling or to not deal with what they're feeling, you know, and that's when the concerns, um, increase because the more that they engage in these type of behaviors, the higher the risk becomes, mm -hmm. um, you know, and so I would just really strongly suggest, you know, um, please, please, please parents ask for what you need for your kids, mm -hmm. reach out to the people that are able to help you and able to provide the supports. We want to bring those supports into the space, but we need to know that it's happening. Um, and kiddos, if you're listening, if you're going to watch this, um, let your parents know that you need the help. There's absolutely no shame in asking for what you need to. If you need help, if you're struggling, if if this has been hard for you, and I know it has been for a lot of you, let your parents know. Because your parents love you the best way they know how, but they're not always gonna be able to tell if you need the help. So mm -hmm. please take a minute, talk with your parents, you know, and, and let them know what you need. Thank you so much, Anya. And I really appreciate how you also talked about parents, right? Us getting the support that we need. Um, because when we model that behavior, then it becomes easier. And we all have something to to talk about or heal through or work on. And um, sometimes it's those things that we heal as parents that allow our children to also heal here. Amen. Um, so thank you. Um, and I do see a couple questions here and they're related to um, Santa Clara County. Um, and so Karen Pericone is asking, is there an update regarding no longer requiring fully vaccinated people to wear masks when, when not swimming at an outdoor condo pool? So I don't have specific answers on that. Um, I did mention the CDC um, guidelines in regards to wearing masks and not. I'm going to assume that it is on there, but I will look into that answer, Karen, and I'll respond to you um, uh, in a written form um, after our forum. So I'll look into that specific to our county. And then Gretchen Lindsay uh, Hull asks or mentions, apologies if this was answered earlier, but how close is Santa Clara County to meeting yellow tier requirements? So that was not answered, Gretchen, and that's ve a very good question. Um, I don't have the specifics of like how many days were from it. Um, um, my understanding is that we are close to it, uh, but I don't have a timeline for you as to um, how how long we're away from it. If it's you know next week, if it's in two weeks, um, my understanding is that um, we are close to it. But I can ask as well. You know, I'm only a public information officer, um, and so I can ask um, my supervisor and managers um, to see if we can get a specific answer to that. And then Gretchen, I'll also um, respond in writing. 
Um, so thank you so much for your questions. If I don't see any others, thank you so much, Anya, for coming on um, and for being so patient with her technical difficulties <laughs> here. Um, you know, shout outs to Quetzal, who's working the magic in the back and uh, making this um, all happen um, and jumping on, you know, when I wasn't on. And, um, you know, the rest of the teams at the front lines, right, in one way or another, you know, whether it's the grocery stores, uh, the gas stations, working with our children, you know, as you are, Anya, the public information officers, you know, trying to do our best to get this information out to our community as best um, and in a way that, you know, is connected, right? And it's not just something that I record and I hit play um, and I send it out for people to listen to, which is great to get that information out in that way too. But I think it's also important to connect with our community and give you all the ability to ask questions in a live manner. So. Thank you all for your patience um, with us and dealing with that format. Um, Anya, is there any last words that you'd like to share before we close? Just, I'm just always gonna remind people, you know, that it's really important to uh, practice taking care of yourself, right? It's what you said earlier, Karina, that, you know, our kids, they follow what we model. If we want our kids to take care of ourselves, it has to start with us and you deserve it too. So parents, make sure that you are taking care of yourself because you deserve it and because your kids are watching. Mm. That's all I got. Thank you so much, Anya. And for the rest of you, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you again in two weeks um, on our bi-weekly community forum. Just so you all know, we do host a Spanish one um, at four o'clock on our Spanish channel. And so um, if you have any family members or know anybody that might be interested in tuning in, um, to hear some of this information in Spanish, you are uh, more than welcome to um, tune in then. Otherwise, have a great night and we'll see you uh, in a couple of weeks. Take care. Good night. For the latest information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic in Cupertino, please visit cupertino.org slash coronavirus.